I wasn't egoed out, but after about another another album with Elvin and then a live album, and now it's 1978, and then I just started feeling that um, I just kind of much, I'd kind of uh, accomplished as much as I was going to accomplish, you know, in, in the Elvin Bishop band, and I just needed to do something else. I, I left the Elvin Bishop band to pursue a solo career, really. I had a solo deal with uh, Bill Simzik, who had produced the Elvin Bishop albums, and and so in 78, when I left the Elvin Bishop band, my intention was to gather material, go down to Miami, make a solo album. And then I got the call from the Jefferson Starship, another bolt from the blue, <laughs> very unexpected. Wow. You know? mm -hmm. So tell me about that. Well, I was just you know, hanging out in Sausalito, right there in the San Francisco area. And like I said, look, you know, uh, collecting songs, getting ready to go to Miami. and. Excuse me. I got a little uh, phone call one day from the Jefferson Starship, who I didn't know any of them. I knew of them. I was not a fan of the music or anything, you know, because, like I said, that was a, another world from the Elvin Bishop. I mean, all I knew about them at that point in time was mostly it was like a soap opera. You know, you'd see them on the cover of Rolling Stone, and it would be Grace is fighting with Marty, and Marty's fighting with Paul, and Paul's trying to beat up the lighting guy because he's sleeping with Grace. and. And, you know, and, the, and most of the songs, the hits, were all these kind of soft ballads like, you know, Count On Me and Run Away and With Your Love and, and you know, not exactly my cup of tea musically. So I was really surprised, you know, when they called me. I'm like, how do they even know about me? And it turns out that one of the roadies, you know, they, Grace and Marty had both left the band in 78. And there was some question about whether or not the Jefferson Starship would even continue on. But the remaining members, you know, Paul and Craig, Pete Sears, David Freiberg, decided to stick it out and um, got a new drummer, Ainsley Dunbar, joined right before I did. And then one of the roadies took in a compilation of some of the stuff I'd done with the Elvin Bishop Band and said, this guy's right here in the Bay Area, what about him? And, and they thought, well, he's too maybe too bluesy or something, you know, or... I don't know if it's going to work musically, but, but they decided to give me a call and see how it would work. So they called me and I said, well, well, that's kind of weird, but what have I got to lose? I'll come over and we sat down, we had a meeting in Paul Kantner's living room and we talked and they played me a few songs and we jammed a little bit and, and uh, decided we would meet again the next week. So it was kind of a slow, gradual process. And I just really, honestly, I was, there were no politics, I was not playing games with them, but I honestly, in my heart, I just didn't know if I really wanted to do that. Because, you know, I had people telling me on the one hand, too, oh, that band's a dinosaur. And this was in the late 70s, <laughs> and they were a dinosaur. <laughs> and, uh, and you got, you know, you got solo thing. And so, so I was really um, confused in, about whether or not to do it. So I spent about three months, really, just kind of hemming and hawing. And so the more I hemmed, <laughs> the more they hawed. Um, th you know, then, you know, it was kind of the deal where, well, who is this guy? Are we asking, we're asking him to be in the Jefferson Air, uh, Starship and he's, you know, he's hesitating? I mean, so then they kind of became obsessed with the more I didn't want to do it, the more they wanted me, you know? So um, finally, after a while of kind of meeting with the guys and rehearsing a little bit, writing a little bit, then we, got, then we did Jane. That was kind of the thing that, that clicked for me. Uh, one afternoon, David Freiberg brought in the song Jane, and we started working that up, and I started singing that, and then all of a sudden there was this kind of mesh of like, their kind of folk rock background, the new harder rock edge that they wanted to go in that the guitarist Craig was bringing into the band. He was all into like, at that point in time, you know, uh, Boston, Aerosmith, so he was bringing in that element, and then my sort of gospel vocals on top of it, it kind of meshed, and I thought, well, this is kind of interesting. This is sort of different. And, um, and so Jane kind of is what the light bulb went on for me with that one. So then I said, all right, I'll do it. And then the next thing I know, we're in L.A. recording the first album, Freedom at Point Zero, with a great producer named Ron Nevison, who did a lot of great stuff in the 70s and 80s. And, uh, and Jane was kind of a song of first, you know. It was the first song that we rehearsed. Uh, it was the first song that where, like I said, I kind of got it with the band, how this could work. It was the first song we recorded, and it was the first single we put out, and it debuted at number one on the rock radio tracks. So, yeah. That was cool. That was our calling card. Then. Right. Right. 